gotta tell you, I'm more excited than a mouse in a peanut butter factory today. Today we're gonna build a lathe. For Tutorial Tuesday, we're gonna build a lathe. If you ever wanted to do some lathe work, maybe you don't have the skills, can't afford to go out and spend a bazillion dollars on a lathe, and this is a great tutorial for you. We're gonna build a lathe, but not only is it just a lathe, it's a duplicator, and it'll duplicate not only existing pieces that are maybe are broken or something you just want to replicate, but it'll also follow patterns, which we can make ourselves, so we can do anything we want to. This is pretty exciting. Come on, let's get started. Okay, whenever I'm doing a project like this, I like to cut everything in groups. So I'll cut all the rips first, and that's what I'm doing here. I checked my plans, cut every single rip I needed to cut. And after that was done, I um, got my crosscut sled, set it up, and got my plans, measured all the lengths that needed to be cut, went through and wrote those all down, and then cut everything to length. Whenever you're doing projects like this, if you can cut things in groups, it just seems to go faster. So after that was done, I glued up anything that needed to be glued up. I did that right away so they could dry while I was working on putting the rest of it together. And then I just laid everything out and drilled the holes I needed to drill. And this is the apron of the face and back of the uh, support for the base. And those are the stretchers I'm cutting out there. And then I went over and pocket holed everything. You can glue th or screw through the top of the base, but I like I don't like to see a bunch of screw holes. So I ran pocket holes and everything. And then I used my hot glue gun to tack all my stretchers in place to the uh, face frame in the back and then screwed everything together. I like to use a hot glue gun to kind of tack things in place. That way it doesn't wiggle around when you're screwing it together. It's a neat trick. And here I ran my uh, base, or the top of my base, through the router several times. I made several passes with a three-quarter inch router bit to make a slot in the top. And that's where the tailstock and headstock will sit. And then I just flipped everything upside down, lined up the support structure for the base, and then put all the pocket hole screws in. After that was done, I cut out all the templates I had made with my plans and got those ready for uh, glue ups. And then I glue, them, I glue them to the corresponding pieces. And then anytime I had uh, hole patterns that were the same on two pieces, I would just glue them together with uh, some hot glue. That way I'm drilling, I don't have to drill a bunch of holes twice, I just drill them once and everything's perfectly lined up. And I'm doing the same thing here. Then setting all the holes, you know, it's important when you have uh, precision drill um, drilling to do that you set the holes. And then I went over to the drill press and just drilled everything I needed to drill. There was a lot of drilling, a lot of holes to be drilled. And then trimmed everything out on the bandsaw that needed to be trimmed out to the templates. Pulled everything apart, cleaned up all, cleaned up the uh, hot glue off of them, sanded them up. All right, now that I got all the pieces pretty much cut out and uh, uh, I have all the holes tapped with the exception of the knobs, I'm going to start assembling the headstock and the tailstock. And typically, if you're going to do this for something that you're going to use a lot, you're going to hang on to, you know, for a long period of time, uh, you would use wood glue to glue up some of these joints together and then screw it together to hold it, you know, really nice, tight, secure. But because I'm doing this for more tutorial purposes, and I'll probably use it a few times and then take it apart. I'm just going to use some hot glue so I can do this quickly. So I went through with my wild and crazy glue gun and glued it all together. I glued the whole assembly together before I put any screws in. That way if there's any mess ups I can usually find it, pull it apart and fix it before the screws are in. So it's a neat little trick to use. I lined everything up, put some hot glue on it to hold it in place and then I ran a bunch of screws in to secure everything up. And then I put some three quarter inch tracks on the bottom to ride in the slot, which is important because it lines everything up. It makes it all work. Okay, so in my plans, I um, Don't ever included have to worry some about templates for the knobs that we need for this, for tightening everything down and adjusting it. 
Now, I, normally I would just do that on my circle cutting jig on my, on my uh, <clears throat> oh, the thing that goes around really fast, the router. But um, since I made the templates, I'm going to use them. I'm just going to glue them to a piece of plywood and I'll cut them out on my scroll saw. So after I cut out the, uh, the knobs, glued them down, I went and cut them out on the scroll saw and, and drilled the corresponding holes I needed on the drill press. <laughs> I like watching it and fast forward. It makes me look like I'm really getting something done. I went over and glued some spacers on the uh, knobs for the tailstock, cleaned everything up, and then I ran some bolts through the headstock making sure that I carved out a little section there to make sure that the bolt head would be flush with the outside of the headstock. And then put the uh, knob on the tailstock, ran that through, put a T-nut in it and just tighten it down which sucks the T-nut right into the, the tailstock there. And then set it with a hammer and ran a couple screws in both sides of that T-nut to hold it in place. Alright guys, um, for the headstock bearings I'm using these, uh, they have a, roughly a 3 8 interior diameter and they're a flange bearing and I pulled these out of an old uh, 6 inch disc sander, central pneumatic 6 inch disc sander, the pistol style and um, I know you can get these online, the local hardware store here carries them but if you can't find a flange bearing in the next video I do on this um, here in the next couple days I'll show you how you can make your own flange bearings. So and the way I install these is, is I'll take my headstock and I'll install it in backwards and put these both on like that. That way I know this is centered in there. And then I'll just take a few screws and I'll fasten it in so that holds that in place and then I'll reverse the headstock and do it on the other side. Alright, the way this assembly works, I've got my two flange bearings on and uh, I'm just going to put a, a, a washer on here that's just a little bit bigger than the inside of that uh, bearing so it doesn't ride, it doesn't scuff around the outside. And I'll put that on before I install the, the um, headstock or the head arbor. And then I'm going to run another bearing or another um, washer on the other side. And then I'll use two bolts. fix this in place and I'm going to run that up pretty tight so that's going to keep that's going to knock any play out of it and the reason I put two bearings in and I put them so far apart part oh, far apart uh, the reason I put them so far apart is because uh, I want the stability if I had these one bearing or had them really close together I'd get a little bit of play I'd get a little bit of um, uh, perpendicular slop here and I don't want any I want that to be nice and tight so I use two bearings I separate them about three inches and that just alleviates any type of play I would have to worry about so once I have my first nut on there I, I tighten it up pretty good just so it'll spin you know fairly freely and it won't move back and forth at all and then I'll thread my other nut on and then I'll jam nut those two together so that, so that uh, they don't spin off when I um, get this thing rocking. Alright, and for my tailstock, I have this 2 inch um, plate that goes up underneath here and rides in between those slots we put in earlier. And then these, then the tailstock sits down on these, maybe. <laughs> oh, come on, you. There we go. And then these two pass through knobs that we put together that go on here. So that'll lock the tailstock in place. It's not going anywhere. And then this is our 
This is the tailstock point that I put on this, and our piece will sit in here, and it will make different style headstocks for different different functions we want to use this for. Whoa! I feel like the south end of a northbound mule. <laughs> in case you can't tell, I'm fighting off a cold. Uh, part one done. Part two, either tomorrow or Wednesday, probably Wednesday, I need to tweak the plans a little bit. We're going to build the template guide, the duplicator guide, the, the router sled, and the tool rest. And then I'll also be posting plans at that with, on part two. They're not free, but they're dirt cheap. And then um, I'll also, after I post plans, post a link in the description box below where you can, where you can find the plans. But anyway, this thing is going to be awesome. We'll go over mounting the grill, a few of the things in part two. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys like what you're seeing. This is going to be exciting. I can't wait for you guys to see what this thing can do. It's going to be really cool. That just gives me so many ideas. Thanks for watching, guys.